We are living in a world where there is more extreme weather. And wildfire risk continues to escalate here at Pacific Corps. We are making the investments necessary to protect the public and to protect the infrastructure and to protect the people of this company as well. While the wildfire risk has been increasing here in the West, the investments that Pacific Corps has made has risen right along with it. To date, we've already spent over $500 million in wildfire mitigation, and the current forecast for deploying the system hardening that's involved in the wildfire mitigation plan reaches into the billions over the next eight, 10 years. It becomes important to understand, well, where do we prioritize those investments? And so we wanna make sure we're targeting that large investment where it's gonna make the most impact, where it's gonna reduce that fire risk the most. We have an expansive weather station network here at Pacific Core. By the end of 2023, in Pacific Power, we had nearly 300 weather stations. And in Rocky Mountain Power, we had nearly 200 weather stations. They're there because we're collecting important meteorological data that we're going to feed into our local weather forecast models. Temperature, wind, moisture levels, wind gusts. These hundreds of weather stations give us better data so that we can make better decisions on how to mitigate fire risk and how to protect the system from extreme weather events. So by establishing an internal meteorology team, they're able to run these risk models with our own weather station network to help identify that risk no matter where and no matter when across our entire service territory throughout the year. We have amazing, really cutting edge technology. We have a computer model that covers more than a million square miles. It forecasts weather for every single point across that entire region. We have access to two types of modeling. We have the short-term modeling and the long-term modeling. With both that long-term and short-term view, we're able to identify where the fire risk is, and by identifying that, we can then decide what mitigations to deploy. We've taken 30 years of historical data, and we use that to identify areas of potential risk so that we can mitigate as much as we can ahead of potential wildfires in the future. By looking back at that data, we understand that when the conditions are at their driest and when the wind is at its windiest, that top 5%, when those two things come together, that's where 98% of the catastrophic fires have occurred. When those conditions are present, we want to, for safety reasons, de-energize the lines and let those conditions pass. And so we deploy that when we know that the conditions are escalating, but they're nowhere near that top 5%. And so we give ourselves a little bit of a safety buffer, say a 15% dryness, 15% windiness, to make sure that we're making a good balanced decision between the risk and the outages that are created through the mitigation steps of de-energizing. I'm optimistic because I know that we are doing the work necessary to keep the public safe and to protect the infrastructure of the utility. As that risk has increased, our response has increased as well to match it and do everything possible to reduce that risk of fire in the areas we serve. <laughs>